Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from DadX and here we are in a sigil near a planet because today we are going to be looking at planetary interaction. Now planetary interaction would probably be called mining if mining wasn't what we did to rocks out in space. It's basically extracting materials to be used in industry or simply for profit from planets using a uh, planetary interaction setup so that's what we're going to be looking at today now today we're going to be looking at quite a, a low level basic setup i've seen a few videos about planetary interaction out there and they all seem to start with people with maxed out skills doing the most blingiest most uh, advanced setup that you could do straight off the bat but we're not going to do it like that we're going to look at the basics first and then upgrade and see how then to make different planets interact with each other to maximize your profit or your productivity depending on which one you're looking for as in the most disc or just the most product to be passed on to another step in the industrial chain so if we have a look on the overview here which i've just expanded so you can see it a bit more clearly each planet shows up on your warp 2 tab by default and you've got temperate we've got barren here We've got a gas planet, we've got an oceanic planet. This is a temperate planet. We're right by here, by the way. It looks quite like Earth, because Earth is a temperate planet. And there is an ice planet. We also have lava planets and plasma planets, though there are none in this system. Different planets will produce different types of products, as we shall see. Now, the decision you need to make is do you want to do the most kind of convenient PI as in what's in your local system or very close to home, i.e. Metzarel. So we've seen the selection of planets we've got here in this system. Do you want to do a bit of market research and do some sums and make the product that is going to make you the most ISK kind of day to day or week to week, however you want to manage your PI? Or do you want to produce a product that's going to fit in with a production chain, your, your own, your corpse? Maybe you want to contribute to making fuel blocks. Maybe you want to contribute to uh, the production of some uh, higher end ships, etc. or modules, which is what all this high end production goes into. So where do we find out such information without even leaving the station? Right, the first thing I do have to say before we get into any more detail is that alphas cannot do planetary interaction. It's a little like barge mining or level 4 missions. They would be too easily farmable on free accounts. I completely understand why. So unfortunately, you do need a subscribed Amiga account to do planetary interaction. So, that being said, how do we find out what is available on the planets in our home system? Or how do we find out, firstly, what planets are available, maybe more remotely? It depends on how we want to go about setting up our PI, as I said. So here is a website, .lam Eve Maps. I will put the address in the description. This is a, basically a 2D map of Eve. It's a very nice way of looking at how things are laid out. It makes a little bit more sense than the 3D map in-game. Now I know, because I look quite a lot, Metzarell is up here. You can, of course, just search right in this bar for a specific system. It'll take you straight to it. Metzarel. If we go to Metzarel, we get the information that we need. NPC kills, ship kills, pod kills. The Celestials tab will list for every system in the game. The, the sun type, the planets, the moons, the asteroids, etc., etc. So you can see remotely what is in any system planet type wise now why do you want to know what types of planets are around that's because depending on what type of planet you are going to that is going to dictate what kind of pi you can do there well depending on which planet type you're at that will dictate which raw materials can be produced now this is another website lot i use this is evehelper.tk again that will go in the description you can see here all of the materials that can be produced in planetary interaction, starting at the left with the raw materials, which is what you're actually going to get out of the ground. That can be then processed into a processed material, this column here. They can then be combined in pairs into a refined commodity, which are then combined in pairs into a specialized commodity, which are then combined in pairs, or I think trios, into advanced commodities. So it's kind of like that kind of normal game production tree, tech tree, whatever you want to call it, 
of that progression from the very simple to the very complicated and from the very cheap and also high volume with the raw materials you're going to produce a lot of cubic meters of raw materials that then get refined down into smaller amounts of higher value commodities that is one of the most useful things about processing your materials is that they're easier to haul out so there are various ways of going about deciding what you want to build so you could just go for the most profitable as i said now something to bear in mind on this page is you have got some price information here and it is traffic light color coded from red to green the green price means the price for that particular commodity is good at the moment compared to its average that's not comparative to other commodities so carbon compounds has got a, a relatively low price at the moment aqueous liquid has got a relatively high price at the moment but as i say don't look at this and just go oh i'll go for the things with the green traffic light price because they're obviously the best money it might not actually be the best money and also bear in mind that the production amounts from each material from each planet are going to vary so comparing the prices is not an equal comparison either we'll look at that when we're on the planet so what you can do here is see if you want to produce say your intention is to produce enriched uranium so you can look there at enriched uranium and you can see that enriched uranium is composed of precious metals and toxic metals Precious metals come from noble metals and toxic metals come from heavy metals as you can see here from these ways these boxes are highlighting and also when you highlight a commodity in this box to the right it will show you the commodities in the next stage up in production that that contributes to so toxic metals goes into construction blocks or consumer electronics or enriched uranium depending on what you're going to combine it with during the production so if you want to start doing pi to contribute to uh, production further along the chain you kind of work your way back from the material you want to end up with to the materials that you need to produce back along the chain to make that if you want to do basically what is most profitable you're going to do some market research but as i say until you're looking at a planet and you figure out the relative yields of materials you can't really just base that on prices and the third way of looking at it is simply to say what planets have I got in this system and what can I produce based on that and that is the method I use I don't max my PI at all it's a very passive income stream as you will see a very nice passive income stream that once set up requires minutes of work a week to maintain and make the money out of so if you just want to see what say you've got a a system and it's got an ice planet and a barren planet what can we make based on what we've got here so we could go for enriched uranium because from the ice planet we can get heavy metals which will go to toxic metals and from the barren planet we can get noble metals which will go to precious metals which will go into enriched uranium so that's one option if you have those two planets to work with and you can just see what combine the planets that you've got in your system in different ways and then just see what you can go how far do you want to go up this tree now obviously you can't start day one pumping out these commodities over here so let's see how to set up our very first planet what i'm going to do it's very easy to mimic this you know having lower skills than you've got because of the way the skills work so for today's little setup we're going to pretend that we have got the upgrade skill to level two and to be honest with you the interplanetary consolidation skill is irrelevant today we're only going to be looking at one planet but we're going to pretend that we've got the command center upgrade skill up to level two and we're going to see what kind of setup we can get there because obviously once you get into level four and level five of a skill they're quite long trains 22 days each which is exactly why this particular alt has never got around to doing level fives now as you can see here there are a couple more skills in the planetary section one is planetology but you have to re train remote sensing up to level three before you can train planetology now i'll be completely frank with you as you can see there that level one is telling you that you can allow scans within i guess one light year three light years five light years i'm not quite sure what that relates to i 
think that maybe is a different part of the game that may be redundant now. If anyone knows what that actually relates to, please let me know. Anyway, but we do have to learn remote sensing up to level 3 to learn planetology, and that just gives us a bit more accuracy to the scans we can run on the planet to locate the resources. Enough admin. Let's get out into space. Now, I've got a couple of things in here that we need, although I only need one. You do need to bring with you a command center, which you buy on the market, and you need the correct one for the planet that you're going to set up on. So this is a barren command center to set up a planetary interaction on a barren planet. Now, these are available for 81,000 ISK from all kinds of NPC vendors all over the place. If you go to Dodixie, you will see that they are worth rather more than that. In fact, if we check the prices and we go down to the first entry to Dodixie, 137,000. So when my alts were all young, one of the ways I had of making money was to grab these command centers from the closest NPC vendor for 81,000, go maybe two free jumps back to the trading hub and sell them for at least 50% profit. You can actually sell them for much more than that. There's no buy orders. If you set a buy order up there for a very cheap price, you can make quite good money on those command centers. But that's an aside. Anyway, we've got one. You need one per planet that you want to set up on. And here we are out in space. But we can immediately just stop our ship because we don't actually have to go anywhere. We just need to be in space. So if we go to our warp to tab, and we can look, I'm just going to look for the closest barren planet because it saves a little bit of travel time. And because we've got that command center in our hold, if we just go right click on there, view planetary production, and we're in here. Now this is an actual view of the planet. We're going to click on the scan tab. And here you can see a list of the materials, the five materials that we can find on this planet. We're going to go for base metals. So we're going to highlight base metals and you can see here highlighted the white is the areas with the most of that material present. And you can slide this scanner in and out. So what you will find is the length of this bar next to the material shows you how much is on the planet. Noble metals, if we were to highlight that, that none even shows at that resolution of scan. We're going to have to go in much more to even find any. Is there any present on this planet whatsoever? Let's go all the way back down here. Can you see any color? So this is telling me at the moment that there are no noble metals to be found. I'm just checking that I've got the resolution the right way around. There seems to be nothing there. I can see no color representing noble metals. Now that is simply because obviously over time the resources get used up and the more people that have got PI set up on the planet. I think I'm correct in saying that the more people that have got their PI set up on the planet, the more the resources will get reduced. And obviously we're out in high sec, so it's a high traffic area. And like everything else in the game, the, the lower the security status where you're doing something, the higher the rewards. And we'll show you in the next part because my main PI is set up in a low sec of 0.3 and I've also got a PI set up in a wormhole. So we can see the comparative levels of uh, productivity between those three areas here in high sec, low sec, and then the wormhole. But anyway, we're after our base metals. So we shall get our scan resolution back set to where we want it. We'll go back to build. Now we've got our Baron command center on board, so we can position it. And if we zoom in, we can see that that is where we will place the command center. Now, you can place the command center anywhere on the planet. It doesn't need a physical connection to the rest of your setup. But all I will say is that whenever you come to this planet view, it will zoom into your command center. So you want it kind of where you want to be seeing on the planet. So let's have a little look around. So there's a nice big area here. What we might want to do is just say, well, we know there's no noble metals to be seen. Is there anything else close by? If we wanted to switch production, what's around so if we set up in this sort of area here we've got a reasonably good carbon we've got a reasonably good base metals we've got some aqueous liquids so we are going to zoom in just so we can see a little bit more clearly go back to build click on our baron command center and we're going to put him down right there 
So what we then need to do, and this is something you need to remember with PI at nearly every stage when you do anything, you need to click this submit button. If you exit the screen without clicking this button, you haven't done it. So make sure you click clear. So we have now built a command center. And now the command center's down, we could dock up, but I'm not going to worry since we're out in high sec. We now only need to be in space to pick up the commodities when they're produced. That's very important when you're in low sec, wormholes, null sec. Minimize the amount of time you're undocked. You only need to be undocked to pick stuff up, as we shall see. Now that's there, it's opened up this whole menu of other stuff that we can build. Starting off with the extractor control unit, which is what gets the material out of the ground. Basic industrial facility does the first levels of production into the processed materials. The advanced industry production will take care of le tech two, sort of level two and level three production. And then you need the high tech production for the highest level. There is a storage facility and there is also a launch pad. Now, when you have a launch pad, you can transfer materials on and off the planet via the customs office that is in orbit. You can get materials off the planet without a launch pad. You can't get materials onto the planet without a launch pad. So when you're at a low level and you can't build these higher level things because you can't upgrade your command facility high enough, you have to use manual launches to get your materials off the planet, which we'll see when we finish the cycle. But you can't put anything in to combine materials, if you see what I mean. So you really want to concentrate on just one material and producing that as much as you can at this stage. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So we're gonna put down an extractor unit. Now all of these cost money, but we're gonna review the costs at the end rather than try to keep track as we go along. We'll look in the wallet and just add up exactly what we've spent on setting up this system. Now you can see the radius here, and that is where we'll be able to actually extract material from. So there was an aqueous, aqueous liquids area over here. So if we put our extractor down around here, that should be good. And again, we're gonna submit. That's cost us 45,000 isk to do that. Not much at all, really. Now, how do we actually get the stuff out of the ground? This is our extractor unit and we can set a cycle but we don't want to set the cycle yet. Before I do anything else, I'm going to build one storage unit. Now, in terms of placing the rest of these units, the closer you can place them together, the better. And some people put them literally absolutely as close as possible. Because what you need to do, once you put that down, is then right click, create link, and run a link to the extractor. You can do it the other way around. But again, submit. So now we can materials can transfer between these two buildings. So we're going to go back here, Baron Extractor Control Unit. Now we're going to set up a little bit of extraction. This is going to be where we click on here as many times as we can initially until it tells us here we've run out of power. This is the power load and the CPU load on the command center. So once we've run out of bars, we can only get four extractor heads on, which isn't very good at all. What we also need to do on this screen is click on the material we want to show up. So what we need to do is move all these heads into the area here, and you can see these numbers here going up. So the closer we are to the middle, the higher those numbers will be. So I'm just gonna move those four heads here for now. And this is what we could actually set up with no skills trained because we've done no upgrades to the command center as yet. Now here for length, we can go from an hour up to 14 days. And you can see that the size of the circles for the extractors increase with the length of the cycle. So the shorter your cycle, the smaller your circles, and therefore the more you can focus them in on the very highest yields area. And if we actually take the scan resolution down, you see right in here, so we could get all of these four heads pretty much in the very, very highest level of the mineral. 
So the reward for running short cycles is that you can focus these heads in. I usually run on three day cycles. What we're going to set up right now is a 12 hour cycle. So you can scroll with your scroll wheel here. You can click on the bar. You can uh, plus and minus various ways to move this bar. So we're just going to go for 12 hours. You can see the size of the heads there. They're not actually that much bigger. So we can get them in there. And that's actually what we could do with no upgrades whatsoever, with no skills. So we're going to click Start Extraction. And we're going to click Submit. So this is now running its program. But what we need to do, it says here, a little warning for us in red not rooted so we need to click here on products click on base metals which is the product that's going to be made and click on create root now if all we're going to be doing is amassing these base metal materials initially we just need to click on create root we need to click on the storage and we click on create root and then we need to click on submit so all of the material produced from these extractors will now be moved into this storage facility. And this is the most basic version of PI you can do with no skills, basically. But what we're going to do is go to our command center. And we're going to click on the upgrade button. And we're going to upgrade it to level 2. And there we go. That gives us this much more power and CPU capacity. There we go. That cost us 580,000 ISK to do that. But now, because we've got this initial capacity, so what I'm actually going to do is stop our little extraction cycle. Because what we can now do is put more heads on. And let's see how many we can get on. So now we've got 10 extraction heads on rather than four. So that's a great increase to our productivity. Now these aren't going to fit into the higher yield area in the middle. So you see the numbers will be slightly lower, but obviously overall the yield is going to be much, much higher. The one thing you are going to have to bear in mind is that if at any time this storage facility becomes full, any product produced by your extractor is just going to disappear. So you always have to manage and maintain that you don't stuff up your uh, storage on the planet because any productivity after that will then be wasted. So now we're going to restart our extraction on the 12 hour cycle so we can see what this planet can produce in 12 hours. And again, click submit. So another option here if we go up to level three, it's going to cost us nearly a million to do this. But we're going to go ahead and upgrade to level three. So now we've got even more capacity. So now we can go back to build. Now, you could actually build another extractor. But I would recommend that you leave that until you've got your PI really settled down and got your head around what you're doing and how your setup's working. What we're going to do is create a basic industrial facility and we're going to plonk it in nice and close right here. And we're going to put another one right here. So we've got two of those. And as I say, you can squeeze these in even closer. I'm just kind of leaving. In fact, we're going to cancel that because that's not pretty enough for me. There you go. We'll put one there and we'll put one there. Submit and again right click create a link back to the extractor and from this one so they're all connected up and then I'm just going to put one link in here from the storage back to these and it's basically to stop them getting overloaded later on so these are all now interlinked and I'm going to put in submit now what we have to do now on these basic industrial facilities is tell them what we need them to do. And it's already realizing that I need a schematic installed and we want reactive metals installed because 
we're producing base metals from the extractor which as we saw from the tech chart goes into the reactive metals so we're going to install the reactive metals blueprint there and we're going to install the reactive metals blueprint there and submit what we need to do now is root some material to it and then root the product back out so what we're going to do is go back to our extractor back to the products and the base metals we're going to delete that root we're going to create a root to there create root and we're going to create a root to that industrial facility create root and then we're going to press submit so now the extractor is going to be passing the materials to these two factories any excess will then go into storage because again if you didn't have the storage for an overflow if the uh, industrial facilities couldn't cope with the amount of production coming from the extractor it would just be lost so there's always going to be some material maybe overflowing from the production facility that needs to go into the storage once there is material in the storage you can then route that back into the factories but we can't do that until we've actually produced some so we'll need to come back and do that during the cycle what we now need to do is click on the basic industrial facilities click on their products and click on the reactive metals and tell that where we want it to go and we want that to go to storage and the same for the other industrial facility we want the reactive metals to be rooted into the storage create root now you see they've lost their red rings around them that means they're all they've got everything they need to be doing what they're doing they've got a schematic they know what to produce and they've got a route for the product and they know where to move it we've still got a red ring on the extractor because we haven't actually started the cycle and not everything is rooted so our extraction is running my mistake but what isn't rooted is this excess material you see that's what's going to go to the two industrial facilities for production that's overflowing so we need to put that into the storage he's lost his red ring we are now all good to go and i actually think we're just going to leave it there so we've actually only used a couple of levels of the command center upgrades to get this up and running i'm going to leave it running okay we've come back actually after 15 minutes it takes 15 minutes for an extraction cycle to run which means we have now produced some product so as you can see we've got some reactive metals in there already and we've got the overflow of base metals so what we can do here is just in case at any point because over time we'll talk about the details in the next episode of the the numbers and the cycles obviously lengthwise this episode is just about there we'll just wait till later and see what we get in so forgive me those of you that know pi quite well or have some experience of it for the stuff that i'm skipping over here but we'll get on to that in the next episode but for now these base metals we're going to route back to the extractor uh, to the industrial facilities because over time we may not be producing enough from the extractors to keep them running and that's more the case the more facilities you've got up so rather than press submit every time we can kind of stack it a little bit and just create another route over here to that industrial facility and create that route and submit then so then we've got kind of a cycle going on of the surplus going into the storage and going back out to the industrial facilities we also do have some capacity left on our command center so we can build we could build a launch pad right now but I'm not going to because I do want to show you just once how to get the stuff off before you've built a launch pad. Because if you build a launch pad, they cost a million. We could certainly fit one in in the scheme of things, but it's going to take away perhaps from our productivity. So we'll leave the launch pad till the next episode too. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put in a couple more of these basic facilities as close in as possible to these guys. And we're just going to kind of add this into our network. I cannot 
construct another industrial basic facility because it would overload a power core. So there you go. We can get one more in. So why not do that? So we'll submit that. We need to just do the same process of give it a schematic, reactive metals, give it a link. Oh, let's submit the link. Uh, sorry, submit the schematic, create a link to the extractor. Now that link can be two way. So for now, we won't build another link into the network. If that gets overloaded, we'll upgrade it as and when. But he's still flashing red because we haven't actually routed any material to him yet. So let's go back to the extractor. This one here, we can delete the route. That's the route to the storage. So we're going to create another route to that industrial facility. And then with that last bit of excess, we're going to direct that into the storage. So there you go. That is the absolute maximum we can do at the level we're at. We've got three factories processing the base metals into reactive metals passing the reactive metals into the storage facility it is then going to pass on the excess of base metals back into the factories as and when and hopefully we'll just have a, a load of lovely reactive metals to pick up at the end of the cycle we shall see so here we are back on the planet just over 12 hours later and as you can see the red ring is running around the extraction control because it's run out of its cycle time it stopped doing anything but as you can see our factories two of them because i made a little error two of them are still producing because remember we're passing back the excess material from the storage unit into the factories however i forgot to route any of the base metals back to the third factory when we added it on so we shall submit that so now that's producing two so even though we're not actually mining or extracting anything at the moment we are still converting base metals into reactive metals and so far we have got 1540 so here we have a little look at the market value we shall do it a little quick bit of the mathematics let's have a look 340 times 1540 that's about 520,000 isk I can tell you using the power of my calculator so that is something to bear in mind and that's the first 12 hour run and I plonked them down quite casually just to speed up this tutorial now in the next episode we're going to look at expanding our planetary interaction into the more advanced levels of production and also doing that polishing and tweaking to make it a little bit more efficient but the first thing we're going to need to know is if we want to get this raw materials off of the planet without a launch pad how are we going to do that now i think to build a launch pad we're going to need to upgrade the command center one more level and we'll do that in the next episode so that would be as if we had command center upgrades level three now we could have left off one of these factories and put the launch pad in instead but to be honest i think when you're starting off you're better off just maximizing the production until you've trained up the skill to put in your launch pad now what we can do for now is if we create a link between the command center and the storage center now when i set this up i said you didn't need to do this and you don't if you've got your launch pad but because we haven't got that we're going to have to transfer our reactive metals over to the command center using an expedited transfer to the command center now it has a very small capacity it's only going to take that much of it 1315 execute transfer and if we click on the command center we can arrange a launch and we can launch that straight away by adding that in the cost for this launch is going to be 79,000 and that's about 20% of what we made so that's not great so although you can get your commodities off of the planet I'm going to recommend that you wait until you get level 3 skill or alternatively if you're not going to train up to the level three skill as a priority put in your launch pad sooner rather than later so just put in two production facilities on one launch pad 
I'm quite happy to wait until we've trained up, or we've trained up in theory, to level three. We've got lots of room in this storage facility at the rate we're producing the material, so there's no great rush for us to do that. We've probably put in, including what we've just moved, about 10%. So that's five days worth of production will be held in there. That's more than enough time to train the skill up to level three. It's only 14 hours, but it's 14 hours that are really essential. Because of these costs of planetary launches without a launch pad, you're not going to get much money out of your PI if you have to do it this way. But for scientific purposes, I'm going to launch... Uh, my reactive metals into space there you go I shall now get a bookmark we're going to undock we will get a bookmark to show us where our collection point is right so once you've undocked on your planetary production tab up here you click on launches and that's where your bookmark gets put so we'll walk to location it does expire in five days so do remember to go pick it up but as I say, in the next episode, we shall have a look at how to get our launch pad up and running, expand into level two production, but you're going to need more than one planet really to do that effectively. That's where the launch pad becomes essential. So we'll pick this stuff up and then we'll just have a little review of how much this stuff has cost us so far. In fact, for now, all we need to do, right, if we now go onto our general overview setting, planetary launch container, open cargo loot all there you go it's in our sigil we can take that home so we've got about 370 thousands worth of reactive metals out in that launch which makes the 79,000 isk launch cost even more horrific really that's what getting on for 25 percent of the value so we need to avoid that so onwards and upwards so we're going to go and dock up. We'll be back very soon to do those upgrades. Before we go anywhere else though, let's just check in our wallet how much it's cost us to put all this together. Right, so if we have a quick look in the wallet, I have done the sum scientifically, but that's where we bought the command center. That's the spare one, we don't count him. It comes to just over 2.1 million we have spent so far. That includes the tax we've just spent on getting that stuff off for that launch. So, um... Making 500 grand back in raw materials in the first 12 hour cycle is pretty good start really. We made about 25% of the costs back in theory and we're only going to get more efficient over time. Obviously there's more money to be spent but there's a lot more money to be made. So anyway guys this is probably the longest E video I've ever made and we haven't even got to the good bit yet. So leave us a like if you've liked it. I have been very brief about some aspects of this which we shall tidy up in the next episode. Any questions feel free to leave them as a comment. Leave us a like if you've liked it. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. The next episode will be up very soon I promise promise you and we will go into more detail there but for now take care of yourselves take care of each other fly safe fly brave and goodbye